Hello and welcome to our genetics activity based learning. Today you're going to take on the role of a detective. Not just any detective, but a DNA detective. There is an accompanying activity sheet that you will need towards the end of this video, so make sure that you have it printed out or available on your screen. You can pause or rewind this video at any point that you need to. So what are we going to do today? Well, firstly, we're going to hear about the story of Jessica, who needed to go to the doctors for some DNA detective work. We'll then find out what is a genome, what is DNA, what is a gene, a protein and a codon. After this, we'll watch a video to see what DNA detectives discovered for Jessica and what changes they found mean for her health. So this is the story of Jessica. She is four years old and has suffered from epilepsy from an early age. Epilepsy is a condition that affects the brain. When someone has epilepsy, it means that they have a tendency to have epileptic seizures. A seizure happens when there is a sudden burst of intense electrical activity in the brain. It's scary for Jessica, scary for her parents and everyone around her. Despite countless medical tests, no diagnosis for her seizures was known and no medical interventions were able to prevent the seizures. So during this session, we will return to Jessica and her story. So firstly, what is a genome? Well, your genome is one whole set of all of your genes and all of the DNA in between your genes. There are around 20,000 genes in your genome and almost every single cell in your body contains a copy of all of your genes. Only 2% of all of our DNA contains instructions for making proteins. This is called the exome. The other 98% of our sequences help regulate the DNA. Here's a short video that explains how to look into our genome and how it can help us explore and understand things about us ourselves and our health. What's in a word? Well, if the word is genome, confusion mostly, especially as many people tend to miss off the first E. Now, the link between our DNA and a gnome with a fishing rod might seem odd, but to be fair, both genome and gnome do feature a whole lot of fishing. So let's stick with the gnome and the fishing thing. Whole genome sequencing offers lots of opportunities for a fishing trip into what makes us us. Fishing through the 20,000 or so genes and the bits of DNA between them allows us to explore not only what makes us who we are and how we are, but also what might be. Insights from our DNA mean that some medical treatments can be tailor-made to our unique and individual selves. And much like fishing, we're never quite sure what we'll come up with. So when contemplating the genetic view of life, genome or gnome, the choice is yours. But we quite like the beard. So we've talked about the genome and mentioned DNA, but what is DNA? Well, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. A bit of a mouthful, so we'll stick to DNA. DNA is a long molecule that contains our unique genetic code. It's like an instruction manual and it holds all of the instructions to make all of the proteins that are in our bodies. DNA has a unique specialized shape that you might recognize the double helix in the picture, it looks like a twisted ladder. Information in DNA is coded for by four building blocks or bases, which are adenine, cytosine, guanine and thymine, A, C, T and G. And just like in computer coding, DNA uses this coding language to create you, your body and how it looks and works. So all of the instructions in our body can be written out by combinations of just four letters, A, C, G, and T. The order or the sequence of these bases forms the instructions in the genome. And your genome is the complete instructions to make you. There are over three billion pairs of these letters in the human genome. If you tried to type out the human genome at 60 words per minute for eight hours a day, it would take you 50 years to finish. The human genome is big. So now we've talked about the genome and our DNA, but what is a gene? 
Think back to our last slide about the coding bases, A, C, G and T. Will these bases have a technical name in science, which is nucleotide? And these base or nucleotide sequences code for proteins. The sequence of base nucleotides is very important because they determine which particular protein is going to be made. A gene consists of different segments called exons and introns. Exons are the parts of the gene that code for the protein and introns are the non-coding sequences that sit between the exons. Don't worry, you aren't going to be tested on this. So now we know what a gene is. Let's find out more about proteins. Proteins occur in all shapes and sizes and forms to fulfill many important roles in the body. And as we mentioned on the last slide, the different proteins are coded for by different sequences of DNA called genes. One gene makes up one protein chain. A protein is made up of a string or chain of amino acids. There are 20 different amino acids that are available in humans to be arranged in any order to make up a protein chain. This chain can be thought of as an amino acid beads on a string to create the protein chain. We have learned what the genome is, what is DNA, a gene and a protein, and now we have one final new word to learn about. What is a codon? The length of DNA which codes for each amino acid is called a codon. A codon is a nucleotide triplet, a sequence of three bases, which codes for a specific amino acid or a start or stop point. For example, the three bases ATG code for a start codon, which tells a gene to start coding protein. The three bases TAA or TAG are stop codons, telling the gene to stop coding protein. There are lots of other combinations of bases which create different codons like GGC, GTG, CCC, etc. And each codon specifies for a different amino acid. As a reminder, these amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. So well done, you've already learned a lot about the field of genetics in a really short space of time. Now we're going to think about how we can use what we know about genetics to become DNA detectives. When we want to investigate and look into the human genome, we need to sequence the DNA base code. When we sequence a genome, we don't obtain one long sequence like a book. Instead, it's chopped up and those little bits are then sequenced to be decoded. Our first job is to put these bits back together in the correct order. Begin at the beginning and go on till you come to the end, then stop. If we take the book Alice in Wonderland and chop it up every 300 words, how easy would it be to put back together so that the story still makes sense? It's a bit of a challenge. Once we have the full sequence, we have to investigate what genes might be involved in causing the disease, if that's what we're investigating. If a mutation or a change in the DNA sequence has occurred in a gene we are interested in, we need to be able to identify it. Who in the world am I? Ah, that's the great puzzle. In our book of Alice in Wonderland, imagine that every paragraph is a gene. We are looking for changes in specific paragraphs. We want to find out if part of the story has changed. How did Alice fall down the rabbit hole? If there has been a change in our paragraph or gene, is the change significant? What effect does the change have to the story? Normal genome variation occurs every one in 300 bases or letters. This creates a lot of data to analyze. Computer algorithms allow us to filter out variants that have been shown to be normal within the population, leaving us with the variation that has the, pen, has the potential to cause disease. How puzzling it all is. The American version of Alice in Wonderland is still the same story, 
even if some of the spelling is a little different. American spelling is different from the misspelt word. DNA changes can be thought of as a bit like that. Sometimes it's just a different spelling, not a mistake. For example, in British English, we spell the word colour with the letter U. In American English, the word has been shortened without the letter U. There are varying levels of spelling mistakes. Sometimes you can still understand what the word was supposed to be, but other times it makes no sense at all. Similarly, some DNA changes can make proteins that are a little bit different but still work. We need to be, we need to be able to identify the ones that don't work. So here we are onto our activity. And what are you going to do? Well, as I said, you're now a fully trained DNA detective. I'm about to give you some instructions for your case on the next few slides. So you can decipher, figure out the two sequences in the boxes um, and they're on the first page of your worksheet. So make sure you've got that to hand. When you've figured out these two sequences, you need to identify what changes occurred between them and decide what effect this change has made. So to start off, you need a way of decoding the genetic code and this table will help you do that. It's the same table that genetic scientists use within the lab. We can use this table to convert a codon of three DNA bases into an amino acid. We start with the first letter in the codon. In this case, it's the letter G. So we look at the green column in the table for the first base position and look for the box that has the letter G with the blue star on the left. Then we look at the second letter of the codon, a C. We move across the table into the column below the letter C in the red box, again with a blue star. You should now be directly to the right of the G in the green box and below C in the red box. Finally, we look at our third letter in the codon, another C. You should now be able to see that three bases of GCC code for the amino acid alanine, which is represented by the letter A. Now we know that the code on GCC codes for the letter A. Have a look at your worksheet. Do you see the GCC code on anywhere in your coded sequence? You might need that later. So let's play DNA detective. You have the knowledge and now you have the table to decode. Remember, to translate the three letter DNA code from the table, you need to First, take the first codon letter from the green bar, take the second codon letter from the pink bar, and take the third codon letter from the blue bar. As another example, the DNA code ATG gives us the amino acid M for methionine. So that is your mission, if you accept it. Become a DNA detective and decode and decipher the sequence information on your activity sheet. Remember, you can pause and rewind this video if you need to recap. Okay, so hopefully you have started to decipher your sequences and some sort of code should be appearing. Pause the video now if you need more time to decode as I'm about to go through the answers. So looking at your worksheets, the first code on you had to decipher was the base letters T, G, G. 
By looking at the code on table, you should have been able to figure out that TGG codes for the amino acid tryptophan, which is represented by the letter W. So W is the first letter in the code. Next was the codon CAT. This codes for the amino acid histidine, the letter H. If you got those two correct, then I'm sure you must have done well with the rest of the sequence. Hopefully you found out the information encoded in the first sequence was, why is a raven like a writing desk? A famous line from Alice in Wonderland. When you decoded the second sequence, it should have been something very similar, except there was a change within the code. Did you spot it? Well, one of the codons has changed from CTT in the first sequence to ATG in the second sequence. And this changes the amino acid coding from the letter L to the letter M. So now our second code reads as, why is a raven Mike a writing desk? That makes, e that makes even less sense than the original sentence. Well, well done if you managed to find the change. A lot of work goes into being a D DNA detective. Now you've deciphered your code, let's go back to the story of Jessica and find out what scientists discovered when they looked at her DNA sequence. When the human genetic code was first mapped back in 2001, everyone said it would transform medicine. Well, finally, that promise has become a reality. And thanks to the 100,000 Genomes Project, the NHS will be the first health system in the world to benefit. We went to find out more. Jessica has a rare genetic condition which causes epilepsy and affects her movement and general development. But which rare disease is it? She's had MRI scans, she's been under general anaesthetic for that, she's had lumbar puncture, she's had EEGs where they measure her brain wave. When repeated tests failed to diagnose the rare genetic condition, her parents decided to join the 100,000 Genomes Project. It used blood samples from Jessica and her parents to compare their genetic makeup and pinpointed a change in one of Jessica's genes not present in either of her parents. We think looking at this particular gene that it does explain Jessica's features. In the past, patients like Jessica with rare genetic conditions would often go on a long journey of discovery to find out what was wrong with them and what treatment would work best. But this trial and error approach was both costly for the NHS and frustrating for the patient. But now genomics, or the study of the human genome, has the capacity to transform the health system as we know it. Your genome is your body's instruction manual. It's made of DNA, there's a copy in almost every cell. Genomics is the study of the whole genome and all the technologies that you need to analyze and interpret the genome. The 100,000 Genomes Project is a landmark project set up by government and the aim is to sequence 100,000 genomes from around 70,000 people with either rare disease or cancer. As well as speeding up diagnosis, genomics can also be used to predict how well a person will respond to a particular treatment, so it can be tailored accordingly, what's known as precision medicine. And it's this approach which is set to have a huge impact right across the NHS. The sheer capacity of the genetic sequencing machines that we have available to us now means that instead of just doing a few thousand bases of DNA, we can actually do um, tens of millions. And I think part of what this project is aiming to spearhead is a whole change in culture whereby um, doctors realise that actually genomics and genetics is going to come into their area of medicine. So we all need to educate ourselves. It's a pioneering project which has also put the UK in front. This is the most exciting project on the planet because what we're about is transforming the experience of the human race. The UK and the NHS are unique. 
we not only have the scale in one single coherent uh, system, uh, but we also have the fact that we have alongside that deep science which has accumulated over many years in, in our hospitals, in our universities, in our science institutes, and particularly the science of genomics. What that means for those within the NHS is they will have better diagnostics and those diagnostics will link to increasingly improving treatments. It's already made a big difference to Jessica and her family. They now know that she has GLUT1 deficiency syndrome. This means she doesn't produce enough of the protein, which transports glucose from the blood to the fluid around the brain. If we'd have, say, had this done when she was born and found out the results straight away, we would have um, been on the right track immediately rather than having years of diagnostic work done. And by knowing Jessica's faulty gene was not inherited, it provides peace of mind for her parents. So if they decide to have more children, there's less chance of it being repeated. Jessica and her family are also helping medical research by taking part in the project, by studying her genome and the genomes of families like Jessica's. This project will lead to earlier diagnoses and more tailored treatments being developed for many families just like hers. So that was Jessica's story and how DNA detective work, looking at her genome, found out an answer for her problems. So how does looking at Jessica's DNA relate to the sequences that you just decoded? Well, by sequencing all of Jessica's genome, as well as her parents, scientists were able to compare, other, compare them to other DNA sequences within the 100,000 Genomes Project. When these sequences were compared, they noticed that there were a few base changes. Scientists can then look at the genes these base changes occur in, see what they encode, protein, and if they may cause the symptoms of Jessica's epilepsy. One of these gene changes was identified to be linked to the symptoms of Jessica, the GLUT1 deficiency mentioned in the video. By supplementing her diet with the protein affected by the gene change, Jessica has now greatly reduced her symptoms. This is not always the answer for everyone, but it is the answer for some patients. So this is the end of our activity. Thank you so much for learning about genetics with us today. We hope you enjoyed the video and deciphering your codes. Find out about more great science activities and information using the links below. Goodbye.